who starts game one of a playoff series for the Wild? Who is the preferred playoff opponent in the first round? And what does the goalie situation look like beyond this season? We answer those and many more questions as we open up the mailbag for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Your Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we answer your mailbag submitted questions that range from who the Wild should play in the first round of the playoffs to what the goalie situation looks like beyond this season. So uh, appreciate all the mailbag submissions. We'll answer them as best we can here today. My name is Seth Topal, host of Lockdown Wild, your veteran Minnesota sports content producer with over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams and now fully focused on the Minnesota Wild and captain of Locked on Wild. Happy to have you along for a bonus edition of Locked on Wilds. The uh, Wild play the Hurricanes tonight and uh, we'll try to get back into the wind column after a uh, pretty fun back and forth against the Pittsburgh Penguins, albeit a uh, costly one for the Wild due to some injuries that now uh, will lead to them being a little shorthanded into tonight's game. Mark andre Fleury will start in that, and uh, we'll see Tyson Jost up to the second line with Freddie Goudreau and Kevin Fiala. Alex Goligoski also back into the lineup. He takes John Merrill's place, and Nick Bugstad will center the fourth line for the Wild here tonight, but I uh, wanted to give you a little bit of a Saturday mailbag as you are out and about in the car, heading to wherever, uh, or just looking for a little pregame listen before uh, tonight's game. So uh, plenty of questions to get to here for today's episode and wanted to start with the uh, goalie situation because we did have uh, quite a few questions in that realm, we'll start with uh, Westworld on YouTube asking, how much upside does a combination of Hunter Jones, Zane McIntyre, or Derek Barabo bring? Do you think one of them could be a solid backup if we lose one of Talbot or Flurry? Or would you look at a mid-level free agent? Well, first off, thanks for the question. Uh, second off, I think if the Wild do not bring back either goalie or one or the other, I think they would look to free agency uh, to try to um, try to fill that backup goalie position. Uh, I think the Wilds did tip their hand a little bit as to all of their focus and in the goalie position is now on Jesper Wallstead when he is ready to step up and to take over. And so between now and then, we're looking at uh, bridge situations or or enough to, you know, kind of piece things together uh, until he's ready. Would imagine he'll get uh, at least a little bit of time in Iowa next year uh, and then could uh, potentially be with the team after that. But it's interesting because when Marc-Andre Fleury was acquired by the Wild, there were some rumblings that he would be interested and uh, the Wild would also be interested in uh, making it more than just a rental situation, maybe giving him another year uh, extension into next year to uh, try to give him a little bit of uh, a little bit of security and not just, you know, having to bounce once again after um, going to Chicago, um, just giving him a little bit of a longer term situation. Uh, to be with this team. And you look at Talbot, he's under control for, uh, I believe, another two seasons, uh, one more year after this one, at uh, right around $3.3 million per year. So it's, it's, not, it's not a hefty sum to, uh, 
to give up for a goalie. It's it's right in the middle of the pack. So I, I think there certainly is an option that they uh, decide, well, if Flurry wants to be here another season and if he performs well enough, then maybe you do try to alleviate a little cap space by uh, sending Talbot um, elsewhere. And then you go with Flurry for a year. And if Jesper Wallstead is ready, it's his. If he's not ready, then um, then you you bring somebody in to kind of get it to Wallstead and uh, and go from there. But to uh, to answer the question in kind of a, a longer way, I'm not sure that Hunter Jones or Derek Barabo. Uh, I don't think I've seen enough from them um, to even be ready to give them a try at the NHL level. I just, I think, you know, I, I, my criteria is if a player dominates at a particular level, then bring them up the ladder. And I don't, I don't, I haven't seen the, uh, the domination from Jones or Barabo to, um, to warrant giving them that opportunity at the NHL level. Now, if they they go out and they perform strongly next year, absolutely. But at this point, I, I haven't really seen enough that would give me, you know, a, a lot of enthusiasm with having those guys up in a backup situation where you are one injury away from uh, having, you know, a, a large amount of starts for either Hunter Jones or Derek Barabo. I'm, I just I think it's a little too soon uh, for those guys, but uh, if they end up performing well, uh, they they should definitely get a look at that point. Now we move to Zach, uh, longtime Locked On Wild contributor Zach Zeman, with uh, a couple of questions, asking if the Wild really needed to go out and get Mark Andre Fleury, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to say yes. I initially was not in favor of the trade, but I think we have seen a couple of things. A lot of Marc-Andre Fleury's numbers were due to the team in front of him. He still has plenty to offer to uh, this team and to even a team next year. He still is is very capable of good goalie play. And um, I, I think he gives the Wild a goalie who can steal some goals from opponents and therefore potentially steal some wins. He was uh, very good in that Flyers game, uh, ended up saving two goals above expected. So very good there. And uh, so we'll see what he has in store for tonight. But as we've talked about, not only has Flurry been good, but the Cam Talbot uh, factor has also weighed in on the goalie situation. Previously, Talbot didn't really have... Anybody pushing him. If he struggled, Capo Kakadin was going to get maybe a start or two. But there was never really any danger of the situation flipping to where Capo would become the number one and Talbot would become the backup. Fleur is a veteran enough and has had success enough to where if he performs well and Talbot doesn't, you flip him. And Fleury becomes the starter. Talbot becomes the backup. So it's put some pressure on him to keep his performance level high. And he has done so uh, himself to uh, to kind of keep him as the 1A at this point in the season. You look at the Pittsburgh game, had that one, the early goal where he had his pads shut and the puck kind of fluttered on him, which if he is able to just kind of stay back a second later and uh, not open his pads, that's not a goal. And so you look at that and also the fact that Pittsburgh is just a, it's a really good team. So all in all, I think it was a move that was needed not only for what Flurry brings to the goalie room, but also for what he brought to this wild team in that, hey, we're going for it. Everybody's got to pick up their performance a little bit um, and uh, – get us into the playoffs. So speaking of playoffs, we will uh, chat about that when we come back. Uh, potential matchups in the first round. Who starts in game one of a playoff series? We'll talk all that and more as we continue today's mailbag episode 
of Locked on Wilds after this. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. You can get farm fresh, seasonal produce, and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. And it's all about convenience with HelloFresh. Not only do the ingredients come pre-portioned, so you're not overbuying or wasting food, but it's easier than ever to get filling meals on the table in a snap with options like family-friendly or quick and easy recipes. So head to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use the promo code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, head to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use the promo code LOCKEDON16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's all at HelloFresh. The month of April is here, and no fooling, Built Bar is here to help you look great and feel great as well. If you're looking for a little change of pace from your normal Built Bar routine, Puffs are here to give that to you. If you haven't tried Puffs yet, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. As with most Built Bars, Puffs contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. You can compare that to your normal candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. So head to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off of your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. For your second listen, make sure to head over to the Locked On NHL podcast to get all of the latest NHL news regarding your favorite NHL teams from your favorite Locked On NHL experts. Locked On NHL is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. So let's talk a little playoffs here on this mailbag edition of Locked On Wild. And uh, I'll start with an interesting one because adventure's a little bit out of the... Uh, Minnesota Wild Realm, but it's still Minnesota related. Trenton on YouTube asking, do you think all four major men's sports in Minnesota, Vikings, Wilds, Twins, and Timberwolves, will make the playoffs? Well, I know two will. Uh, the Minnesota Wild are basically a 100% guarantee to make the playoffs this season. So I'll say yes there. The Minnesota Timberwolves, having uh, a fantastic season, uh, and uh, they look as though they are for sure in. Might be that play-in tournament, but uh, nonetheless in for the uh, the playoffs for sure. So that's two guaranteed. Now, Minnesota Vikings and the Minnesota Twins is tricky because uh, for the Twins, I think it comes down to how their pitching holds up. Lineup is going to be very good. And so that will be a constant throughout the season. It's just, can they get enough starting pitching to uh, to keep them in it? National League is definitely the tougher league at this point with um, uh, just a ton of very top-heavy teams. And so I'll say that the, the Twins will challenge for a wild card spot. I don't think they're going to get there, though. As for the Vikings, another tough one. We've had a lot of movement in the NFC in terms of uh, superstar quarterbacks. So you'd think that would make the NFC more wide open. Uh, you still have to get through the likes of Green Bay and Tampa Bay. But it's a team that has, they've started to do a good job of addressing their biggest weakness, which is the offensive line. Also need some help in the secondary, which they have started to get with a couple of re-signings. So... Of the two, of the Twins and the Vikings, I will say that one of those teams will get there, but the other will not. So three out of four 
in the playoffs for the uh, the core four here in Minnesota. That's not too bad. That uh, it's better than most years. So uh, moving on to the wild portion of the playoffs. Who starts game one? Zach, again, with a very interesting question, because let's assume the Wilds keep the two seed. Let's look at the scenarios. Uh, obviously, you have Marc-Andre Fleury, who is as battle-tested in playoff hockey as a goalie could be. You have Cam Talbot, who is very good at home. So if you, especially in the first round, if you host that first round playoff series, which way do you go? Let's, if we, if we look at like going to Colorado to take on the Avalanche and starting that series on the road, I think you would go flurry because he has, you know, he has plenty of experience in road playoff games. And so I would probably go flurry against the Avs, but that would be more like a second round thing. I think I think I would go I I think I'd probably in a hosting a playoff series I think I would go Cam Talbot. Now, I can understand the argument you brought Flurry in to be the guy. And so if the Wild would decide to go to Flurry in game 1 of the opening round series, I would have no problem with that. I just think you can build kind of a a one-two punch by feeding off of Talbot's success at home. And Flurry's experience on the road. And I think that could work if that's the route that they decide to go. Uh, now, there's a lot of time between now and the playoffs, so that could certainly change. But uh, I think at this point, I think at this point I would go, um, I would probably go Talbot at the X to start it. If he struggles, then you just kind of scrap that plan and you go to Flurry. I think that's I think that's the way that I would do it, uh, depending on the matchup, which is uh, our next question. Who do we want to see in the first round of the playoffs? I I crowdsourced this question a little bit because part of me is it, I I think the Nashville Predators would be the least desirable. I mean, it's going to probably either be St. Louis or Nashville. Um, I would much rather go against the St. Louis Blues team that it seems like has been widely, wildly, um, been very up and down. And I, I just, I look at some of the things that the Predators do well. I mean, they've got uh, Roman Yossi, who is just, just playing at a ridiculous level this season. And you also have a pretty battle tested and uh, legit goalie in uh, UC Soros. And so a couple of those things worry me. Um, as for the St. Louis Blues, I mean, they have had a fantastic season from Ville Husso. But uh, beyond that, it just, it seems like they have been They've been up, they've been down, and uh, it seems like, especially recently, they are trending in a very wrong direction. I mean, you look at what they've done since the uh, the middle of March, and uh, they have just three wins in that span. They've got uh, a couple of overtime losses, a shootout loss, but they have also lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets. They've lost to Philadelphia. They've lost to Carolina. They lost to Edmonton. They lost to Winnipeg. They lost to Pittsburgh in that span. They beat Washington and beat Vancouver twice. But if you can get through Ville Husso, I think that Blues team is very beatable. So I would probably rather have the Blues because I think the Wild are better suited for that more physical style this year with Delorier being added and uh, Middleton being added. So I'd probably say the Blues, and you just hope that Huso, um, that you can can beat him because then I think if they have to go to Bennington, probably not great. So it's I, I think the Blues would be the ideal playoff matchup. Well, not ideal, but the preferred 
playoff matchup for the Wild here uh, in the opening round. And then beyond that, still got to get through Colorado, still got to get through Calgary then, even after that, if you did get past the Avalanche. So it's going to be a tough road, but the Wild are certainly capable of uh, of going all the way. So uh, we will finish with some hypotheticals on the season and beyond to uh, wrap up today's mailbag episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Sports are happening all the time, and so there is a bigger need than ever for news and information to keep up to date with your favorite teams and your favorite bets. And BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues in their seasons. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, as well as esports and scores. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find it all at Bet Online, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. And again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Just a reminder, Locked on Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. Wrapping up today's mailbag episode of Locked on Wild for your Saturday, we go to Sam on YouTube. And uh, we'll also add in a couple of others, Matt and Zach on Twitter, asking about the Kevin Fiala, Matt Dumba debate, because it certainly seems as though the Wilds are pushing towards a decision one way or the other in that category. They're going to need to alleviate some cap. And Kevin Fiala just continues to uh, get it done. He's he's already having a career season. He's on pace for right around 75 points. And I just very adamantly believe that that is not something that you can easily replicate. Uh, Fiala, 25 years old. He is just entering the prime of his career, theoretically. And so you're going to remove that from the equation and hope that somebody in the organization can step up and, uh, and, and fill that void. I mean, Marco Rossi will maybe be with the team next year, hopefully be with the team next year. But it just, you look at the two biggest names that the Wild have linked to potential trades, Kevin Fiala and Matt Dumba. Kevin Fiala's production, I don't think, is something that internally could be uh, replaced at this point. Matt Dumba's, I think, can. Um, especially with the Jacob Middleton trade, especially with the Alex Goligoski uh, and John Merrill extensions this season so far. Um, I think the Wild have put themselves in a position to where if Dumba is traded, they have the bodies to fill. There's going to be a, a noticeable void, much like um, losing Ryan Suter. Because Suter in his last season with the Wild was fairly productive. And so losing that, you, know, you are going to feel that. But I think the likes of... I think the Middleton trade really was the domino that that changed my mind as to I've I've always been on the Fiala side of it, but I think that was the move that really um really kind of pushed me fully to the keep Fiala side of the argument because it's just there's so much money allocated into this defense. And you finally have some legit building blocks in your uh, your top two lines in terms of the wings, the center positions could change, but you finally now are getting, you, you've had Kaprizov and Zuccarello. You get the chemistry of Fiala and Boldy. You finally get that set, and now you're going to remove from it. You're going to subtract from that group. 
and uh, and go forward with a uh, a noticeable void on the offense doesn't sit well with me. So I think what you do, and yes, I know that um, it's going to take a lot to re-sign Kevin Fiala, which is why, and I'll preface by saying I'm not what we would call a salary cap expert, but what if the Wild signed Fiala to a four-year deal to line it up with Kirill Kaprizov's extension? Therefore, they both can cash in again once the buyouts have lifted. They both can cash in in the same offseason. Or if they find money elsewhere, they can both do that. It just I th- I think it makes sense to just to get Fiala to sign something that will get through the buyout years. And I think I think you can I think you would be more competitive during those buyouts with two top level players. Yes, you're going to have to make some tough choices to get to that point, but I think you can be more competitive through the buyouts with two with an elite like best of the best in the NHL scorer and a a great complimentary scorer in Fiala. I think that would help this team out more than having a decor that is going to have to try to win games 2 to 1 every night or 3 to 2 every night. So my my thoughts on that are clear. As to the number it would take to uh, to get Fiala to uh, to sign here, it's obviously going to be north of like six and a half, probably around seven. So there are going to need to be trades made to do it. I'm perfectly fine with that because I just I don't think he is something that you can uh, can replicate so easily um, if he were to be traded. Yes, you'd get some assets in return, but then you're going to be spending that entire time trying to find another Kevin Fiala instead of just having instead of just having a Kevin Fiala. So final couple of questions that uh, that we look at for this mailbag. Um, interesting one on Kirill Kaprizov, Lord Obsidian on YouTube saying, uh, do you believe that Kirill Kaprizov will eventually join the 600 goal club later in his career. And uh, if I think Yarmir Yager will rejoin the NHL, I don't, I mean, the ageless wonder, certainly if anybody could do it, Yager certainly could, but I I don't, I don't see him uh, maybe, maybe as a coach, maybe as like a front office executive, but probably not as a player. I mean, it's it's a tall order to kind of come back after so much time away. And yes, I know he's still playing overseas, but um, it's a tall order to get back to the NHL. And so I think if if Yager does, it's probably going to be as a coach or front office executive. But he could certainly prove me wrong. As far as Kirill Kaprizov. Uh, and 600 goals. I, I think I did. I did the math on this a while back. Uh, in could Kaprizov potentially catch Alex Ovechkin one day? And let's just assume that in this season, let's just assume that he gets to 45, 46 goals. So he would be going into his age 25 season with a uh, 27 goal season and a 20 and a 45 goal season. So some good numbers to start, but even if he plays, even if you say he plays for 15 more seasons, uh, gets to age 40, you're going to have to, to get to 600 goals. Um, you're going to have to get to, He's got 65 right now. So to get to 600, you're going to have to basically average 50 goals a season for 10 years and then some. So you're going to have to average 
50 goals a season for like 12 years or 11 years added with what he currently has. Now, if you lower it to 45, then you got to play longer. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. It just requires an incredible level of longevity. And, you know, you have to any season then that you have under like 45 goals, you have to have a season that you go over that to make up for it. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, but I think 600 is a tall order, but between four and 500, absolutely. I think he could certainly do that. Um, it, it'll be fun to see. It'll be fun to track um, because he certainly has a chance to rewrite every record that uh, the Minnesota Wild have ever had, at least on offense, um, the longer he plays here. So it's certainly it's going to be fun to track to see how Kaprizov does. But um, 600 goals is <laughs> it's a large number. So we'll uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And I think that will do it for today's mailbag episode of Locked on Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you head over to the Locked on NHL podcast to get all of the latest from your favorite NHL teams with analysis from your favorite Locked on NHL insiders. Locked on NHL is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. Just like Locked on Wild, we are available wherever you listen to podcasts. We're available anytime you feel like listening as well. So make sure to follow along and subscribe and follow us on social media as well. Just search Locked on Wild and you'll find every platform we are available and uh, enjoy the ride with us. Uh, we are also keeping you as up to date on Minnesota Wild news and notes as we possibly can. If news breaks, if a puck drops, or if Nick Delorier gets in another fight, Locked On Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.